Hello YouTube, Tom here. Welcome to my channel, Solo Dungeon Crawler, and this video series, How to Play Dungeons and Dragons Solo. In this episode, we're going to cover wilderness encounter tables, climate, rivers and large lakes, coastlines, roads, and a brief example of a wilderness adventure. I also want to take this opportunity just to say thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel at the time of preparing for this episode, I've just reached 300 subscribers and I'm immensely grateful for each and every one of you. And I've been glad to talk to some of you in the comments. So please keep letting me know what you think in the comments. I look forward to talking to you more. And with that said, let's get into this episode. The next obvious step in creating solo rules which cover adventuring out in the wilderness is creating a suitable method of determining the encounters that will take place. The Dungeons & Dragons Expert rule set provides a very useful set of wilderness encounter tables which are perfect for our needs, but first they need to be adapted so they reconcile with the random wilderness generation method I proposed in one of my previous videos. I have adapted these tables and copied them into a notebook so they can be referenced whenever I want to adventure out in the wilderness in my own solo campaigns. These tables include rivers, oceans as well as cities and other settlements which are not currently included in our wilderness generation method, however the method will be expanded to include these features later. The tables also only cover temperate climates. Other climates such as tropical and subtropical will require further encounter tables which will also be covered later. The random wilderness generation method can be expanded to include random climate and weather to add further depth to our solo campaign. A great resource for deciding on a method to figure out how we can generate wilderness that works with other climates is the World Builders Guidebook which was an AD&D accessory written by Richard Baker and published in 1996. The World Builders Guidebook explains The AD&D system divides climate into five basic categories Arctic, Subarctic, Temperate, Subtropical and Tropical. We can adopt these climate categories into our solo rule system a satisfactory wilderness generation method does not necessarily need to follow any assumption that your campaign setting is a planet that orbits the sun like the earth does in reality. Anything goes really. The World Builders Guidebook says, Remember, you don't have to justify everything with a scientific explanation. For example, if your world has two suns, one above each pole, it could be that the poles are the tropics while the equator is the coolest region of the planet. Or, for another case, imagine that your world is permanently locked with one pole facing its sun. The sunward pole would be super tropical, the middle latitudes tropical, and the equator temperate. So for our wilderness generation method, we can keep it simple. Before starting a hex crawl on a new sheet of hex paper, we can first define what the predominant climate will be for the area. Just a D6 is perfect. 1. Arctic 2. Subarctic 3. Temperate 4. Also temperate 5. Subtropical 6. Tropical Temperate is a roll of 3 or 4 which increases its chance of occurrence as the main Wandering Monsters table adapted from the Dungeons and Dragons expert rule set assumes this climate. The random wilderness terrain generation method will now need to be expanded to incorporate the different climates. To do this I will create a separate table for each of the five climate categories. It's best not to get too hung up on the fine details with this. I just did a little tweaking using the different terrain types listed in the World Builders Guidebook and reconciling them with the terrain types we have handled so far until I had some tables that made reasonable logical sense. They're not perfect, they really don't have to be, they just need to give a basic portrayal of realism, enough that we can suspend our disbelief when adventuring in our solo campaign. 
I think I've achieved that. The Arctic table contains tundras, barrens, ridges, mountains, glaciers and lakes. The subarctic table contains steppes, prairies, moors, forests, barrens, hills, mountains, marshes and lakes. The temperate table is basically the original table we came up with in a previous video with no changes being made. The subtropical table contains grasslands, brush, forest, badlands, desert, hills, tors, swamp and ponds. The tropical table contains savanna, bush, jungle, badlands, desert, dunes, mesas, bogs and pools. So the terrain types are varied but in terms of wandering monsters we can still treat terrain according to the terrain guide in many cases. For example grasslands, savanna and tundra can still all count as plain and bogs and swamps would still count as marsh. Let a mixture of common sense and your imagination prevail as well as your map making skills. If you want to expand even further to add more detail or realism you could further divide climate categories to include both arid and humid subcategories. For example, in an arid, which basically means dry, tropical climate, there would be less vegetation and more desert and dry lands, whereas the opposite would contain much more dense forest and jungles and swamps. At this point, we have a pretty well developed random wilderness generation method. However, a significant thing that's actually missing is a coastline, the seas and oceans, rivers and large lakes. If we glance back at Appendix B in the AD and D Dungeon Masters Guide, which we used for our initial wilderness generation method, Gary Gygax wrote in that appendix, the Dungeon Master must also feel free to add to the random terrain as he sees fit in order to develop a reasonable configuration in any event, the DM must draw in rivers, large lakes, seas, oceans and islands as these features cannot easily be generated by a random method. So one problem we have is that these features cannot easily be generated by a random method. So we need a satisfying and simple way to tackle this dilemma. After doing a fair amount of research, I found an interesting article in Dragon Magazine issue 10 published in October 1977, where Daniel Clifton wrote an article called Designing for Unique Wilderness Encounters. What intrigued me about this article is that it proposed a random method of plotting the course of a river in a simple set of tables which worked as follows. First, you define the initial run of a river by rolling a d4. One, the course runs north to south, 2 northeast to southwest, 3 east to west, and 4 northwest to southeast. With a blue pencil, we could easily mark this on a hex map, plotting it from any location. This could be done on blank hex paper before starting to plot any other wilderness. We can then plot the run of a river from this initial point with another table and a d6. 1 to 2, course turns clockwise. 3 to 4, course goes straight. 5 to 6, course turns counterclockwise. Turn the paper so the part of the river you last plotted is always facing north and roll on the table again. We can simply continue this process until the river reaches the edge of the area, whether this be the edge of the hex paper or a predefined barrier such as a coastline where the river runs into the sea. The river is also likely to run into itself to form an enclosed loop. If this occurs, then the circular area can be coloured in with a blue pencil to mark the presence of a lake. Plot a river's direction to its natural end in both directions from your starting point, taking care to make the river's change of direction gentle and smooth and not so abrupt that the river looks unnatural. I propose, before starting to map the course of a river, roll a d6 to determine how many rivers can be plotted. If you want more or less rivers in the area, just roll a different die. 
I also propose to decide where the river begins in terms of where to start plotting it. A roll could be made on a d8. 1 north, 2 east, 3 south, 4 west, 5 northeast, 6 southeast, 7 northwest, and 8 southwest. Do not start at the edge of the map, however, as the course of the initial run could go in any direction, so give yourself plenty of room with this. For coastlines, we are going to use a similar method of random generation. First, we will define how many coastlines to plot by rolling a d4. For example, a roll of a 2 would indicate that two coastlines must be plotted on the hex map. Next, we roll to see where the coastline begins using a d8. 1. North area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from the top of the page. 2. East area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from the edge of a page. 3. South area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from bottom of page. 4. West area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from edge of page. 5. Northeast area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from top of page. 6. Southeast area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from bottom of page. 7. Northwest area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from top of page. 8. Southwest area of hex map, 1d8 hexes from bottom of page. Plot the coastline using the same tables for plotting the initial run of a river and the direction in which it continues. Plot the coastline until it reaches the edge of a page. If the coastline is going to collide with itself, a river or a lake, then draw in the opposite direction. Let common sense prevail in these kinds of situations. At the start of a blank hex map, it is assumed that the party or single player character begins on a settlement. I will cover settlements later. The settlement has a road leading from it in a random direction, so roll for the terrain type first and then the direction of the road on a d20. 1 is north, 2 east, 3 south, 4 west, 5 northeast, 6 southeast, 7 northwest, 8 southwest, 9 it forks 45 degrees in each direction, left and right, 10 is a t-junction, left and right, 11 crossroads north east south and west 12 side road left 13 side road right 14 side road 45 degrees left 15 side road 45 degrees right 16 crossroads northeast southeast north west and southwest 17 to 20 is a settlement which as i said previously we will cover later now I'm going to show you an example of a Wilderness Adventure transcript. The Wilderness Adventure procedure outlined in the previous video has been updated to incorporate all the steps involved in randomly determining the terrain and its necessary features. Here is an example transcript to show you roughly how Wilderness Adventure takes place. In this case, we will use the character sheet of Tyrell, the first level elf which I created earlier in the series. Tyrell begins his adventure on a settlement built on a plain. On the map, each hex represents six miles. A road leads northeast from the settlement. Tyrell decides to follow the road northeast. He makes a roll of a d6 to see if he becomes lost. He rolls a six, so he is fine. Next, he makes a roll to check for a random encounter. He rolls a five, so he is fine. Tyrell can move 60 feet per turn at normal speed, so in the wilderness he can move 12 miles per day. 60 divided by 5 equals 12. He moves northeast along the road and rolls to determine the terrain in the next hex. He rolls a 9, which means he is still travelling through a plane. Next, Tyrell determines the direction of the road on a d20. A roll of 14 indicates a side road 45 degrees to the left. With the road continuing northeast, the road also indicates a path leading north also. Tyrell decides to take the path north. The terrain type to the north is a depression. He must travel through a large valley, which will reduce his speed by half. In the valley, a side road leads to the right east, and the road continues north. Tyrell has already travelled 12 miles, so it's time to camp. He rolls for a nighttime encounter, 
and it's a one. So he rolls a d8 on the wilderness encounter table and gets a four animal. He rolls a d12 on the animal's table. Tyrell is attacked in the night by a giant weasel. We now have a much more robust and detailed wilderness, which is generated completely at random and allows for almost complete surprise for the solo Dungeons and Dragons player. But the work is not done yet. There are still elements to touch on, things to clarify and clean up, and other opportunities to build the system further. I will end this video here, however, and continue the journey in the next session. Thanks for watching this video on Wilderness Generation for the Solo Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I hope you've enjoyed it, found value in it and would like to see more. Please check out previous videos in the series if you haven't watched them as they will help to clarify things I've covered and show the whole journey so far in terms of creating a solo Dungeons and Dragons rule set from scratch. Give this video a like if you have found value. If you have any questions or would like to discuss anything I have covered, let me know in the comments. And to ensure you don't miss any future videos in the series, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you are notified when I upload a new video once again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next session. Goodbye.